One general category of finding the roots of nonlinear equations is bracketing methods, which comprises of bisection and regular falsy solutions. Learn about the bisection method in this video. Welcome to Numerical Solutions to CE Problems. How do we work with bracketing methods? Say we have a curve with an x-intercept located at this position. Bracketing methods will let us look for a suitable initial lower limit and also a suitable upper limit to define the x-intercept. These limits will eventually be iterated to specify the exact value of the x-intercept. The initial values are considered as limits, which are shown in brackets, thus the term bracketing methods. The first bracketing method is the bisection solution. Since all methods will have to start somewhere, the determination of initial values will be the same for all the five methods. After learning the initial limits, Say we have a curve with a lower limit defined at x equal to 0 and its upper limit is at x equal to 1. The bisection method moves to figure half of the interval and then find which half is relevant. Thus, the relevant half will be disregarded and the half where the intercept is located will be iterated further. In short, bisection method uses the relevant half. Iteration requires tables for continuous computations, and in bisection method, the table would have columns for the number of iteration A, B, F of A, F of B, and F of C. Let's discuss what these columns represent. Drawing a curve on the Cartesian plane once more, we have to work on the lower limit and also the upper limit. The lower limit will be at x equal to a, and the upper limit will be with x equal to b. The y location of the coordinate at x equal to a is tagged as f of a. Then the y coordinate of b will be placed at the column for f of b. The bisection method takes half of the interval. The c is like a plus b over 2 and its y-coordinate is solved by substituting c into the equation and get f of c. From the sample illustration, it can be figured out clearly that the x-intercept is at the first half, so we disregard the second half, which means the replace x-coordinate is the upper limit, and it will be replaced by c. Let's take this example. We are tasked to find the positive root nearest the origin, accurate in three decimal places for f of x is equal to 2x cubed minus 2 times x minus 5. First is to look for the initial values and identify x's where the y will have the sign change. If we try x as 0, f of 0 is twice of 0 cubed minus twice of 0 less 5 giving negative 5. If x is 1, f of 1 is 2 times 1 cubed minus 2 times 1 minus 5, which is still negative 5. Now try x as 2. We get f of 2 as twice of 2 cubed minus 2 times 2 minus 5, resulting to positive 7. 
with a jump of negative 5 to positive 7, we take 1 and 2 as the initial limits. Illustrate the two points to understand the condition of the intercept better. The lower limit is at x equal to 1. And at this point, y is negative 5. The upper limit is at x equal to 2, where its y is at positive 7. So connecting the two points, we get a part of the curve. Now to start with the bisection method, we add a and b, then divide the answer by 2. That is 1 plus 2 divided by 2 to give 1.5. Take this value and plug it into the equation to have twice of 1.5 cubed, minus 2 times 1.5, less 5, and get negative 1.25. From this illustration, it is noted that the x-intercept is at the second half of the interval, which means the first half will have to be disregarded, making the new a as 1.5 and its f of a is negative 1.25. The value of b will remain just the same at 2 and its f of b is still 7. Having completed the first four columns, C is then computed as 1.5 plus 2 divided by 2 to get 1.75. And then f of C is f of 1.75, which gives 2.2188. At this point, we have completed the second iteration. But with only the table, how would we figure out which parameters to be replaced? Take note that the updated f of C is positive 2.2188. Going back to the illustration, A yields negative Y and B yields positive Y. So that would be our guide on the replacement. With positive 2.2188, we are to replace B. So again, replacement depends on the sign and negative F of C replaces negative limit. A positive f of c replaces a positive limit. Now let's continue the iteration without the graph. As earlier discussed, b is replaced with 1.75 and its corresponding f of b is 2.2188. a remains at 1.5 and f of a is negative 1.25. Compute for C by taking the average of A and B to have 1.625. Then use this value in the equation to come up with F of C as twice of 1.625 cubed minus twice of 1.625 minus 5, resulting to 0 0.332. With a positive sign of F of C, we have to replace B with 1.625. Continue to the fourth iteration where b is 1.625, f of b is 0 0.332, then a is still 1.5, with f of a still negative 1.25. Now compute for c as the average of 1.5 and 1.625, giving 1.5625. Use this to determine f of c which comes out as negative 0 0.4956. The negative sign of f of c means that c should be replacing a. Proceed to the fifth iteration, starting with a as 1.5625 and f of a as negative 0 0.4956. b remains the same as 1.625 and f of b as 0 0.332. Now compute for C as 1.5625 plus 1.625 divided by 2 to get 1.5938. Plug this into the equation as 2 times 1.5938 cubed minus twice of 1.5938 minus 5 and get negative 0 0.0911. 
The negative sign of f of c means that a should be updated by the recently solved c. The next starts with a as 1.5938 and b is still 1.625. F of A is negative 0 0.0911 and F of B is 0 0.332. C is then solved as 1.6094. Plug into the equation to have F of C as 0 0.1181. With a positive result, we replace this into B. We then change B to 1.6094, and its F of B becomes 0 0.1181. A remains the same as 1.5938, with its F of A as negative 0 0.0911. Compute for the average of A and B to have C as 1.6016. Then use this for F of C giving 0 0.0129. Another positive f of c means that b will be replaced by c again. Just keep on iterating. This time, b is 1.6016, with f of b as 0 0.0129. a is still 1.5938, also with f of a, the same as negative 0 0.0911. C is then computed as half of 1.5938 plus 1.6016, giving 1.5977. The F of C of 1.5977 becomes negative 0 0.0393. Having F of C as negative, we replace A with a new C. The next iteration is then computed with A as 1.5977, F of A as negative 0 0.0393. B and F of B remain as 1.6016 and 0 0.0129. C is then computed as 1.5996. And using this into the equation, we get F of C as negative 0 0.0132. With negative f of c, replace a again with c. So we continue the iteration with a as 1.5996, with its f of a as negative 0 0.0132. b stays the same as 1.6016, and f of b as 0 0.0129. Take the average of A and B as C, that is 1.5996 plus 1.6016 divided by 2, resulting to 1.6006. Use this for F of C to have negative 0.0002. With F of C having three zero decimal places, we have reached the instructed accuracy, which means the x-intercept we are looking for is 